make it we shoot it chicks really dig my awesome singing ability if i were to hand this object to just a random person on the street they probably wouldn't even know what it is they'd probably assume it's a some kind of machine part or maybe even a chess piece and of course this can only come from the mind of the master genius evan perry and this object is a supersonic projectile. The projectile is made out of pot metal, which is not known for its strength. And this weighs in at about 20 grams or 0.7 ounces. Now this projectile with its rye crisp waistline, well, I do have some concerns. That is a weak point. And we're dealing with thousands of PSI, over 10,000 PSI in fact, and probably over 10 Gs of acceleration and it can easily just shatter in that section. So the first hurdle is just making it out of the barrel in one piece, not self-destruct like this. I'll be using a very short X12X gas seal. And on top of that, we'll stack this cork wad to provide some cushioning. And of course the projectile sits directly on that. Now the projectile itself is subcaliber, meaning it's smaller than the bore itself. If we were to just shoot it down the bore as is, it would never be very accurate and we'd never engage the rifling. Now in order to remedy that, we'll be using a Sabo. The Sabo is made out of a shotgun shell and is about 30 thousandths of an inch thick. The Sabo wraps around the projectile, prevents any metal to metal contact, but most importantly, it provides a very tight fit down the bore. In fact, so tight, you would need a steel rod and a sledgehammer to drive that down the barrel. Now these are often called a discarding sabo as they will just fall away as they leave the barrel. The propellant I'll be using is called E3 and it's one of the fastest burning smokeless propellants on the chart. And this should work quite well for this lightweight projectile. I'll use 20 grains of it and that should give us a velocity around 1500 feet per second or Mach 1.33. All the components are loaded into the shell and all that's left now is to put a roll crimp on it. Now this is a good opportunity to tell you the difference between what's fake and what's real. If you don't see a check mark next to my name when someone is replying to you, then they are fake and a criminal. I'm Mike from United Ammo and I'm back with Jeff today and today we are going to shoot the checkmate. That's, that's, because they look like a chess piece. They it, do look like a chess piece. Just like the uh, rook or like the castle. We're going to take a shot here at Brandon and see what kind of damage it does to this guy. At 20 yards and we're going to try it for full rifling but I have high hopes these will do well um, through a even uh, rifle choke and smooth bore, smooth bore, a universal slug we call it. So let's give it a shot. Okay, shot number one, full rifling. Okay, 15, 50 feet per second. Well, good news everybody, the pot metal projectile held up to that initial G-Shock and flew rather well using full rifling. With our 1 in 36 inch twist rate, the projectile was spinning at over 30,000 RPM. So far it's looking rather promising for the Checkmate projectile. I just want to mention that, that we, I put that red dot, the Goatar red dot, back on that shotgun and I took a test shot at 20 yards at an orange sticker and it, and it hit the orange sticker so I know it's sighted in for foster slugs. However, different type of ammunition, where'd that one hit? This one hit a little high and to the right. Went straight through the first layer of Kevlar. There's no Kevlar all in the back of them. Right out straight through the back, pulled the Kevlar through. Yeah, I didn't expect that. And this was out of a rifled barrel, fully rifled yep, barrel. Yep, we had it looked like we had good spin and all that. Should we try a rifle choke next? You yeah, wanna, you, yeah, let's do that. Let's see what happens with the rifle choke and see if we can get a uh, more accurate shot with that. All right, today we have the Tracker B, which is just another series of shotgun that the Tracker manufacturer makes. 
This is a semi-automatic bullpup. They come with two uh, five round magazines or you can purchase the nine round magazines. And this gun is pretty bad. I have an EOTech zombie stopper on it along with the uh, Tacticon um, 1200 lumen flashlight with a nice pressure, pressure switch. And today we're gonna be shooting the uh, Checkmate out of this gun with a rifled choke. It takes chokes, that's cool. Yeah, and this actually takes chokes. It comes with three, but this is a Benelli Beretta thread pattern, which will take this without a problem. Okay, a lot of people have asked us to shoot stuff out through a rifled choke, and we're gonna accommodate them because we look at the comments, we read them, and if you have a suggestion, we'll definitely consider it. And once again, this is the Tracker B. I love it. From United Ammo. You guys come and see us and pick one up today. Not sure if that thing is sighted for these. We sighted it in using foster slugs. Got it really close. What slugs? Y'all ready? I'm ready. <laughs> okay, uh, I am ready when you are. You got it. 15. 49. Oh man, my loads are pretty tight. The other one was 1550. Got it. Well, the Checkmate projectile using a rifle choke as viewers requested did quite well. And I gotta admit, it's pretty rare we get that kind of accuracy out of the second shot in our tests. Now you probably noticed that the spin rate was rather well, anemic. We may have gotten a thousand RPM out of this thing, but it really didn't need it. It was stable even with that little bit of spin. Better shot out of it out of that rifle choke versus the fully rifle barrel. The fully rifle barrel took it high and right. This actually hit pretty dead on. Yeah, you were just holding it uh, just on that green X, right? Yeah, right on it. Very nice. And it impacted pretty good. It flattened out right on top of itself, collapsed and broke down. Pretty good penetration as well. Yeah. I think that's I, good, I didn't uh, see in the high speed, which has a little tiny screen, I, di I didn't see a whole lot of spin. Uh, it might have been in 10 yards, it rotated half a, half a turn or something like that. But either way, it, it did pretty good. I'm me. impressed. Yeah, it didn't uh, crack the back or nothing, I don't think. No, no bulging. But, oh no, there is a slight bulge, I apologize. We'll flip it around so people like seeing the bulge. Is it? Oh, I don't see anything. Is it's there? a slight, slight bulge right where that impacted. You're, you're exaggerating your bulge, no, bro. I know. I got a really small bulge. <laughs> <laughs> I, you asked me what these things are made out of. I told you they're, they're made out of like pot metal. <laughs> and you immediately thought, okay, these things, you know how much force it takes to shove something from zero miles an hour to, you know, 100 12, or 1,500 feet per second. Right. It's a lot of a lot of force yeah and you would think that that little stem that the, the narrow stem of the slug would just cr get crushed collapse on itself or even break into pieces yeah I was suspecting some shattering to go I, on, but uh, they held together and, really I, and well. another thing I told you is like every time Evan sends me some I, I always predict they're gonna do bad there's gonna be some failures and I've been surprised almost every time he does he is a, the guru of making slugs it's amazing well very nice yeah let's do it again that's only our second shot so we still have six <laughs> more to go let's have at we it we gotta have some kind of failures right yep okay whenever you're ready jeez jeez now we got even less spin in this shot now it's often easy to forget that we're shooting experimental handcrafted slugs that have slightly different tolerances. These aren't perfect factory made projectiles. So the point of impact was off just slightly, but still I'm kind of impressed. Did pretty well in that shot? Yeah, I think I did. Like you said, not being able to determine where these bullets are going because they're an experimental round. It did hit a little high and right, but still. That's that's respectable though. Yeah, clean through. And, and, and then did the, the the moment of truth though? Did you 
did we capture one? You know, I came over here and looked. Since the first one went through the first layer of Kevlar on Brandon, I didn't think we were gonna find it. But I actually did. Oh, it did it. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's a little mangled up. I'll, I'll probably have to put that on the tabletop, get a good close-up, but um, a little... It's a it's a tough material. I was I was worried that that stem would shatter, but it's holding up quite well. Um, that's not bad after uh, going 1,500 feet per second, 1,550 or so, and uh, impacting a Kevlar vest after going through a gummy bear. Not bad. Yeah. So uh, I'm Zach, and uh, I'm gonna see if I can get just as accurate as Mike's been. So try a different shooter, same gun, same ammo. Who knows, it might. And what are you gonna be shooting at? A bowling pin. 20 yards still. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready, hit it. I think you hit it. I think you hit it. Okay, we're still using the rifle choke and in this shot, we actually got a little better spin than in the last shot. And we certainly had a little more accuracy this time. And that gives you an idea how even minute differences like the rate of spin will give you different points of impact. So far these things are, are being very accurate and I'm hoping that we'll be able to shoot a soup can at 20 yards of one of these. Yeah, definitely. Homemade slug. You gotta, these aren't factory rounds. These are homemade friggin' experimental projectiles by a gentleman with a drill press you said spinning around not even a drill press this is a <laughs> drill motor strapped to a table <laughs> so uh, we're gonna take a shot now at the jug of water with a complete smooth bore we took out the rifle choke that we had about three inches of what you say one in 32 it, it might be one in 36 inch twist I have no idea what that rifle choke twist rate is we didn't get much of a spin from it though okay oh. smooth bore test I just realized yeah, ears be good. I I didn't even notice. I I, I need to watch for those things. Okay, um, I'm ready when you are. It looks good. The Checkmate slug did remarkably well. It flew very stable with no spin at all. Now we're using the same exact gun that we used with the rifle choke and it would certainly appear that depending on the rate of spin it really does affect its point of impact the less spin we had the more it flew high and right okay 20 yard challenge with the sweet corn sweet corn so much cream better than that sour style corn style sweet corn oh who likes cream style Ugh. Looks like barf. Yeah, it's gonna be. <laughs> okay, what's what's the challenge? Okay, the challenge is I'm gonna hit this thing right here in the middle of this can laying flat like this. That's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> it's gonna happen. He's feeling very confident, and if he can get it, I'm, I'll. Uh, everyone will be impressed. If I get this, you guys owe me lunch. There you go. You get all the cream corn you want yes. for lunch. Cream corn, so <laughs> yummy. Yes. That last shot was made from the smooth bore choke. So now we went ahead and put the rifle choke back in and see if we can get that. Creepy. That's what you've been having good luck with. So we're gonna stick, go back to that. Yeah. We got Mike shooting again and um, he thinks he can hit that can. That's a long ways. That is a long ways, folks. People, like I said, if you get, I'll, I'll let you even use factory ammo. Get five shots with factory slugs at a soup can at 20 yards. I bet you'll have difficulty. You will eventually hit it, but we're not using factory rounds here. So let's see if Mike can hit it. Ah, so close. That was high. I think it was high. Now I gotta say that was a very respectable attempt and I don't think even Mike knew how close he got from hitting that can. That thing was a millimeter away from hitting it. And I bet most other channels wouldn't even show you a, a mess like that. But we like to be real and honest with you and show you even errors. Mike, there's an invasion of the AI dude. Getting ready to take out Skynet. 
Skynet. I thought it was AI. I thought everyone was scared of AI. That is Skynet. Oh, okay. Yeah, in the the uh, Terminator oh, series. The, uh, the art artificial intelligence. Yep. It's a it's a two letter word that's very fancy. That yeah. Right. <laughs> We're gonna hit the AI okay, at 50 yards. 50 yards away. Okay, good luck. Out. You couldn't even hit a soup can. God. <laughs> Out of the rifle choke here. Okay. You hit it. I think it was That's a chest neck. shot too. Money. With an experimental projectile, it can be difficult hitting a target at only 20 yards. So hitting a target at 50 yards is really quite a feat. With the bigger, heavier, and slower Worminator slug, we could actually see the ballistic arc. That thing dropped quite a bit. But when we used the lighter and faster Checkmate slug, the trajectory was pretty flat. So it ended up hitting a little higher than expected. But at least he took out that super creepy looking target. Where were you aiming? I was aiming center chest and it flew high and right. Okay. Still a hit's a hit and that would have been a kill shot I think. Yeah, it would have definitely have taken him out of the fight. Yeah. Just a little bit. That's a wonderful target, huh? Yeah, it's a beautiful <laughs> target. It's kind of creepy. What do you think? I think it's very creepy. Oh, it stayed on the table. And the slug stayed in it. Like I think you nicked oh, the table. Oh, it stayed in the block. Yeah, it's in the block. Overall, we had a great time testing these things out. We didn't have any failures. The slugs didn't break apart or anything like that. And I think they were as accurate or possibly more accurate than some factory ammo. And that certainly makes the testing a lot more fun. It's frustrating when things don't work out, when you start having issues with red dots and all that stuff. And the only screw up was we hit the table when we shot this slug, yet it still did pretty well. All right, he shot a little bit low. In fact, I think he skimmed it off the table there. That's the amazing thing, but, but uh, the, the bore axis of of that thing is a little wonky at, at really close range of course i think i told you to hold it low or something yeah you told me a little low I... yeah you, you should have held it like an inch high <laughs> it would have been perfect it was actually they were you. listening to me that's <laughs> rule number one i was a little worried it was going to go high end to the right again because we had a handful that did that so yeah but but that's that's what the the block i mean it as far as fbi standards that's about what you want right there <laughs> the amazing thing that's I'm really impressed with these slugs. Just, you know, each one, they're, they're not exactly the same as each other. And they have little tiny uh, ballistic uh, variances. The weights were slightly different from one and one the other because they were kind of hand, hand built, you know. But I, again, Evan, you impressed me and uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I, I appreciate, appreciate you guys coming out and helping me. Some local boys. Of yep. Come see us at our shop. Yeah, Mike <laughs> and David, it was helpful. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. No problem. Okay, rapid fire. I'm ready. Not bad. Cycled it perfectly. Tracker B. <laughs> the Tracker B actually functioned very well in these tests. It cycled, at least ejected, all the, the cases from our experimental rounds. And it's certainly a, a little cooler looking than a lot of the shotguns we use in our testing. I really do appreciate you watching the video, and a big thanks to all our Patreon supporters. And if you don't want to support us on Patreon, that's fine. Uh, Maybe turn off the ad blocker when you're watching our video so we make something. Anyway, thanks for watching.